So here's the major upgrade I made to my Leica collection. I decided to sell the CL and three of those lenses and upgrade to the M11 system. I'll come back after the unboxing and talk about my buying decision, my first impression, the lens and accessories I got, and some sample photos. And then I'll do a collection update of my Leica cameras. First, my buying decision about why did I buy this camera, but I think it's a better question to ask why did I not buy it sooner. The M is a flagship product of Leica and it's its most uh, popular line, uh, but I put off uh, buying it because all I've ever heard about the rangefinder was that it's uh, hard to learn, it's difficult to focus, it's all manual focus and it slows you down and you need perfect eyesight in order to use it. But most of that is not true, and I don't think you should listen to that to deter you to trying out the rangefinder. I was impressed with the upgrade to the M11, so I decided to try it out. And it's not that hard uh, to focus. It's pretty easy to line up uh, the ghost image with the actual image. It does slow you down, but not much more than autofocus. Uh, some autofocus cameras uh, hunt around to trying to find the right autofocus, and even then sometimes they get it wrong. And you can also use zone focusing on the M lens uh, to get a quick shot uh, without uh, too much trouble. And I have pretty bad near vision, uh, but I have no problem uh, getting focus with this rangefinder. What I did want was a compact, simplified camera system that's fun to use. And being manual focus, it didn't bother me that much because I'm already interested in trying to improve my manual focusing. The CL is a compact camera, uh, but I already have a 28 millimeter focal length on my Q2. And the CL system gets very bulky when you're adding longer focal lengths uh, to your uh, lens kit. So the CL was overlapping too much with my Q2 and SL2S. Uh, so I wanted to try out uh, the rangefinder, which is a totally new shooting experience. Uh, they do have compact lenses uh, and the body and the lenses uh, just look beautiful together. And the upgrade to the M11 uh, just pushed me over the edge. I'll talk about my first impression and the build quality. Uh, I'm not talking too much about specifications, uh, but it does have a 60 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor with triple resolution technology. Uh, it has the Maestro 3 processor, uh, an, elect an electronic shutter. Uh, improved battery capacity with USB charging and improved ISO range and it now has uh, 16 uh, gigabyte internal storage. I talk about design and build quality uh, because I think user experience is the most important thing out of everything. Uh, I do this as a hobby not for work and whatever makes it enjoyable uh, for me to shoot photos uh, that's the most important. Uh, the Leica system uh, seems to draw me into taking photos and uh, I don't think I would uh, get into photography with any other system. The Leica cameras are so well built and so attractive uh, that they're a joy to use and I look forward to using them. There's some parallels to Apple. Uh, they have the simplicity of design uh, and they have the same uh, design language across their product lines and they tend to uh, take out as much as they can, but still keep it functional. Uh, the body has a matte finish on my black model, and it's 20% lighter than the chrome version. It's actually not a metallic finish. It's uh, kind of a new uh, matte finish to it uh, that feels a little bit more uh, grippy, uh, more texture than the Q2 almost a mix between a plastic and a metal feeling. Of course the leather covering on the magnesium body it's uh, premium and it feels great. It has a 
more coarse texture and pattern uh, than the Q2. Uh, the simple dial layout on the top plate uh, with the uh, shutter speed dial uh, on top and, in the, and then the uh, shutter release and uh, power toggle in front. And then there's a small uh, function button which uh, you can miss seeing uh, but which is uh, customizable to whatever function you want it. And then on the left is the uh, ISO wheel which you have to pop up and then turn and push back in. Uh, there's also a thumb wheel on the right uh, which is also functions as a button that you can customize but you can also customize the wheel uh, for any other function and I use it for exposure compensation. The third customizable button is the function button in the middle on the uh, left and play is on top of that and uh, menu is on the bottom of that and the d-pad is the usual uh, like a d-pad uh, pressing the shutter button is actually an experience in itself. It has a velvety smooth action and it's just very satisfying uh, to press the shutter release button. And it's uh, easy to press and it doesn't produce uh, as much camera shake. On the bottom, the SD card is housed in the same compartment as the battery. So you have to take out the battery in order to switch out the SD card and there's USB charging on the right uh, which is a little bit odd position to put it in because when you're charging uh, you have to put it into an awkward position on the table. For the accessories I told myself I wouldn't go overboard on buying too many accessories uh, but I think I went ahead and did. I got the uh, thumbs up uh, from a third party brand on Amazon uh, but I think it's good quality and I don't feel the need to get a like a branded one. Uh, I, got, I did get the Leica hand grip um, and uh, this is an upgrade from the Q2 hand grip. Uh, it has an opening on the bottom so when you uh, attach the hand grip uh, you don't have to detach it in order to get back into the battery compartment and it has that USB opening also. It provides a pretty good hand hold on the camera. So I think it, it's useful to use uh, to pr help prevent uh, fatigue if you're uh, using this for a long time. My next strap is the same one that I was using on my CL. It's the Artisan and Artisan's neck strap. And it's a simple nylon strap, uh, but I find that it's very easy to adjust and change uh, length of the strap. My uh, camera case is the leather Leica case and I got this because I just liked uh, the green color of this case. Uh, the uh, leather is uh, top quality, uh, very uh, luxurious, uh, very well finished and has the same advantages of the hand grip uh, where you can have access to the uh, camera uh, battery compartment and the uh, USB charging. Uh, but the best thing about this is that uh, stylish uh, green color uh, to this case. For my first lens, I was undecided about which uh, Leica lens to start out with. Uh, so I got this uh, cheaper lens uh, to try out at a 35 millimeter focal length. Uh, this is the TT Artisans uh, 35 uh, 1.4 lens. And it's actually uh, pretty cheap, uh, but it's still pretty good build quality and it has a solid weight uh, to it. Uh, it has a smooth uh, focusing ring and has crisp uh, aperture stops uh, with finger grips on the side uh, to help you uh, get a better grip. Uh, the printing and the colors on the printing are just right and they just blend in with the Leica aesthetic. The hood is streamlined um, and it's not obtrusive. It does come with a lens cap, uh, but that's not very attractive, so I don't use that very much. The image quality uh, for this uh, TT Artisans lens, it produces a pretty good bokeh effect at 1.4, uh, but, but it is slightly soft in the center. Uh, the sharpness is best uh, when it's stopped down to 2.4 to 8. And then uh, at uh, 11 or 16, it starts to get a little bit soft again. Uh, but overall, at this price, 
I think it provides uh, a great value and it's uh, pretty impressive as far as uh, the uh, image quality, the uh, colors, and the sharpness. Uh, but the biggest downside is it has a high amount of uh, chromatic aberration and I think that uh, could be a deal killer on this lens. Uh, it has a lot of purple fringing and that gets uh, very annoying. And uh, 30 mil 35 millimeters uh, focal length might not be my style. I find it a little bit too wide and I'm uh, looking at getting a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, on most of these images, I ended up uh, cropping anyway uh, uh, to get the right composition. So it might just be better to go with a 50 millimeter lens uh, so I can uh, fill up uh, the image. So I'm waiting for a 50 millimeter Leica lens. I was debating between the Summicron or the Summilux, uh, but I think I'm going to end up going with the Summilux. Uh, the Apo Summicron is just uh, too expensive and it's just uh, paying too much for a very small incremental benefit, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I might eventually try a Leica 35mm lens after that, uh, but I, I want to uh, first uh, try out uh, the 50mm. Let's go over some sample photos from a recent trip to Philadelphia. These aren't a true test of the camera's capabilities because it's shot on this 35mm TT Artisans lens and I'm sure I've made a lot of mistakes. I shot mainly in aperture priority mode where I choose the aperture and I let the camera choose the ISO and the shutter speed. This is one of my favorite photos of the trip. It's very sharp at f2.4 and again I think the sweet spot for sharpness on this lens is between f2.4 and f8. I like the colors and the lighting and I like the composition uh, with the sculpture being slightly uh, off-centered and some foliage in the front. There's still some uh, separation in the background and a little bit of 3D effect of the sculpture. This one is shooting up at the ceiling of the lobby of the hotel uh, just to give a different perspective and from the lines uh, you can see there's not too much distortion of the barrel. For landscapes and distant shots it doesn't do too bad of a job with this 35 millimeter lens but I did crop this a little bit uh, so I think a 50 millimeter lens would have done a better job in this situation. This one was difficult to focus because of the low light in the aquarium and the very slow shutter speed uh, and the person was moving right as I snapped the photo uh, but I kept it because uh, I liked the perspective and the point of view of this photo and the blurriness also gives it some character. On this one there's a lot of bright areas and a lot of shadows so on most of my street photography shots I had to edit this in Lightroom to bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows and slightly increase the contrast. But after doing that, uh, you can see there's still a lot of detail uh, left in the raw images and I think this came out pretty well. And I think it helps to shoot in the highlight weighted metering, which is a new feature on the M11 and it's also available in firmware updates on the other cameras. This one came out fairly sharp at f13, but it does seem to get a little bit soft at f13 and f16, so I learned I shouldn't stop down too much on this lens. And again, I had to bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows on the Lightroom for this image. I like the perspective and the colors on this shot. Uh, I did uh, bring up the saturation and the vibrance in, uh, on this uh, image in Lightroom, uh, but uh, I also had to uh, crop down a little bit on this. So again, I think a 50 millimeter would have worked better than a 35 uh, in this instance. Another one where I just like the shape of the building and the colors of the building and also needed a little bit of light editing afterwards. This one was shot at a distance and I just wanted to see how closely I could zoom in on this 
So I did some extreme cropping afterwards, but it still shows a lot of detail even at f1.4. So the 60 megapixel uh, sensor has a lot of room for detail and cropping. Another shot that was difficult to focus, but after many attempts, I managed to get some good sharpness on the lines of the jellyfish in the tank. And I like the pop of the colors, the yellow, the blue, the green, and the orange. Just a nice combination of colors. So here's my uh, current collection overview uh, with all my camera bodies and all my lenses. Uh, the uh, M11 is a totally new uh, rangefinder experience, uh, but it's still a, a compact system and has the option uh, to explore uh, new lenses. And there's an unending supply of uh, vintage uh, Leica lenses out there. The uh, Q2 I still like. It's a kind of an everyday point and shoot camera. Uh, with the autofocus and it has a superb uh, built-in 28 millimeter lens uh, weather sealing and lens stabilizations uh, the only negative is that uh, I think a 28 millimeter is also a little bit too wide for my preference uh, but I'm going to hold on to this camera for a while the uh, SL2S has a better video functionality than the Q2 uh, with the microphone input uh, low light capability uh, with its uh, 24 megapixel uh, BSI uh, sensor. And it can also take on uh, M lenses. I do have an adapter. And it can also take on any uh, L mount lenses. Uh, the SL2S uh, has uh, the best uh, macro capability uh, using my uh, 60 millimeter APO macro TL lens. Uh, but the negatives are a large, heavy body especially when I attach my uh, 24 to 70 zoom lens. Uh, it gets very fatiguing and tiring to carry that around for a long time. So what I'm using these for now uh, for my uh, everyday use, I'm carrying around the M11 uh, for uh, some uh, quick shots and street photography shots. Uh, I'll use the Q2 and the SL2S is for home videos, uh, YouTube videos and uh, macro shots. I'm wondering if I should consolidate any further, but this is where I'm currently at. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.